Welcome back to another episode of the Dota Basics series. In this one, we're going to cover resources in Dota 2 and how they affect your gameplay. Speaking of resources, thanks to both Red Bull as well as the Patreon supporters for making this series happen. We've touched on many of these already, but let's cover them a bit more in detail. Gold is probably the first resource that comes to mind when you think about resources in Dota 2. The most common way to collect gold is by killing enemy creeps, heroes, towers, and buildings. Once it's collected, gold is used to purchase items that amplify your hero's power and give you more tools in your game. In that way, having more gold than your opponents means more items, which means you will be stronger than your opponents when you end up fighting them. The biggest gold bonuses you'll get is from killing enemy heroes. If you're the one that lands a killing blow on an enemy hero, you get awarded with the kill bounty and the most gold. That doesn't mean you should always try to snag the kill though, as nearby heroes who don't get the kill still get some gold reward as well. Another way to collect gold is when enemy towers, barracks, or shrines are destroyed. These bounties get rewarded to your entire team, so pushing down towers with your allies can give you a strong advantage against the enemy. The same principle applies to Roshan. If your team slays him, everyone on your team gets a bonus. Just keep in mind that the player who lands the last hit on the enemy towers, barracks, or Roshan also get a handy gold bonus for the last hit. And surely make sure someone on your team destroys the tower at least, because if your opponents deny or destroy their extremely weakened tower, your team gets way less gold. If you want a way to collect gold that is a bit more danger free, you can focus more on killing either enemy or neutral creeps. For creeps, it's mandatory that you land the killing blow called getting a last hit. Another big way to gain gold is by just being in the game. Every hero gains a trickle of gold over time that really adds up, especially if your hero has talents that increase your passive gold gain over time. Another great way to gain gold is by stanging bounty runes on the map. They spawn in a bunch of different spots and they provide a nice gold boost if you take the time to grab them. There's also a few heroes in Dota 2 that have gold granting abilities. Alchemist Grievel's Greed gives him bonus gold for every creep that he kills, and Bounty Hunter's Track gives you and your team more gold whenever you kill a tracked opponent. You could also purchase the item Hand of Midas, which will occasionally turn an enemy creep into gold for you. And past that, you could always increase your gold by selling your items to any of the shopkeepers, but they only buy the items for half price, so it's generally not worth it unless you don't have space for the item anymore. So to quickly cover the difference between reliable gold and unreliable gold, reliable gold is gained in ways that are difficult. For example, hero kills, courier kills, towers, Roshan, or using your Hand of Midas item. Now, when your hero is killed in Dota, you lose a chunk of gold. However, reliable gold can't be lost in this way. It can only be spent by you, so reliable gold encourages you to do something risky to collect it because you won't lose it if you're killed right after collecting it. Unreliable gold is easier to attain but isn't protected on your hero like reliable gold, so it can be lost when you die. Unreliable gold is gained from lane creeps, neutral creeps, sold items, and the trickle gold that you gain over time. Keep in mind that unreliable gold is spent first when buying items, so it's a great idea to buy an item before you die. For example, if I have 1000 reliable gold and 500 unreliable, and I know that I'm about to die, I can quickly purchase my gloves of haste so that I only have reliable gold left over, and then I protect my gold. On to the next resource in Dota 2, which is experience. Experience is primarily gained when an enemy creep or hero dies nearby your hero. Unlike gold, you don't have to get the last hit for this one, you can just be nearby. When your hero gains enough experience, your hero is going to level up, which does a few things. The most notable benefit is that it gives you more skill points. When you spend your skill points, it makes your hero's abilities available to use, and subsequent points in those abilities make them stronger than they were before. Experience is gained within an area about this size around your hero. It's pretty far, so if any enemy creeps, neutral creeps, or enemy heroes die within the circle, you will gain experience. If you have an allied hero nearby, and something dies inside both of your circles, the experience from that creeper hero is split equally between you. If you remember when we talked about denying before, kind of like last hitting your allied creeps, the main purpose is to deny your opponents from getting the last hit. But if we're talking about experience, it's a whole different story. If you deny an allied creep, the biggest benefit is that creep will give less experience to the enemy team than it would have, and it also provides your team with a small benefit. So if you're able to deny an allied creep if an enemy is around, it's almost always in your interest because it'll lead to you having more experience and more levels than your opponent. If you're wondering about neutral creeps, they're sort of fair game for anyone since anybody can kill them. And if you're nearby when a neutral dies, you get the experience. If your allies are nearby, it's shared, just like enemy creeps. If both you and an enemy hero are near a neutral creep that dies, you and the enemy will split the experience since the unit was neutral and not allied with either team. They just hate everyone equally, so everyone profits from their death. The only tough thing about neutral creeps when we're talking about experience is that killing neutral creeps for their experience is pretty tough at the start of the game. So it's best to stick around creep waves early on to gain levels, and then deal with neutrals a bit later when you have some levels and items. 
just to cover some bases. Buildings in Dota 2 don't give any experience when they die, but Roshan certainly does. The third resource in Dota is towers and buildings. The most important ones are your tier 1s, tier 2s, and your shrines. Towers are important in the early game because they fight enemy creep waves that push across the map, which helps protect your ancient in the long run. Your opponents can't destroy the throne without going through these towers first, so towers give you that basic advantage. It helps you win. So one reason towers are such an important resource is because they limit where the enemy team can move without being spotted. That means having all of your towers limits the paths your opponents can use to move to your side of the map without you spotting them. Filling those empty spots with wards is much easier when all of your towers are still alive, giving you a nice tactical advantage. However, the biggest advantage from towers is for the use of teleport points. Since your tier 1 towers are closest to the enemy base, having more tier 1s means defending allies that are in trouble quicker, and crossing the map more rapidly to get to the enemy side of the map. If you have more towers up than your opponents, you have more flexibility to move rapidly around the map. Losing your towers removes these teleport points from the map, which makes it harder to spread out from your team and slower for you to react. And that's the main reason it's important to defend your towers, even if the gold advantage might seem more important. Keep in mind that shrines also fulfill this need for teleport locations, but they don't provide vision or true sight, and they can be destroyed once you lose a tier 3 tower anyways. The last resource in Dota 2 is time. Very few heroes can be in multiple spots at the same time, so how you choose to spend your hero's time changes how the game plays out. Most players in the moment feel like they're being efficient with their hero's time, but it's very easy to make mistakes and be forgetful. A simple example would be driving the long way to the store because you didn't realize there was a shortcut. If you go the long way, you spend more time on the road, and that's time lost being somewhere else where you could have accomplished something. So when playing Dota 2, try to be mindful of the speed and efficiency that you accomplish tasks. If you're trying to collect gold as fast as possible by killing enemy neutral creeps, then it'll help if you increase your hero's damage and attack speed. With the higher damage output, you'll spend less time killing the same neutral creeps, which gives you the time to fit in an extra camp in the same time period. Many aspects in Dota can be thought of in this way, but as a whole, it's more of a refinement as we're all learning. Once you get the basics of the game, you should try to improve your current speed. For example, if you average 40 last hits by 10 minutes, practice your last hitting a bit, and later try to get 50 last hits by 10 minutes instead. The gold difference will give you a big edge over your opponents. Generally, always try to keep in mind how you're spending your seconds in the game. If you become inefficient and accomplish little with your time, then it will have a very big negative effect on your game. And if that happens, try to learn from it. Why did you waste your time there? What should you have done instead? And how could that have helped you? If you're much more efficient than your opponents, you're going to collect more of the other resources we talked about throughout the game. More gold, more experience, and more tower kills that make collecting resources even easier. Having all of those in your favor should lead to an easy win. And that should cover most of the basic ways to think about resources in Dota 2. But it's not just about collecting more resources, it's also about how you spend those resources. And one of the resources you get, of course, is skill points. So in the next episode, we'll talk about skill points, how to spend them, why you spend them that way, and how to make decisions about that as you play new heroes. Wee 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 wee